Uh, hello everyone, welcome to this video where I'll be sharing bachelor's in Netherlands experience from a bachelor's student who is currently in his second year uh, in Netherlands. So he is Pranav, you might have seen him in many of the previous videos and uh, do check our previous video where we he spoke about like what you need to know before coming to Netherlands for bachelor's. So this video will be focused about his present experience until now. So let's start with the first question. What is your experience of doing a bachelor's in Trent University till now? So maybe we can focus on two, three things first and then I can go step by step because it has so many points. So maybe like what is the study load, ECTS and uh, grading like what is your experience on those things and then we can go to the next points okay um so my experience at university of Twente has been quite good overall i would say sometimes it has been stressful because it's it's not an easy university that you have to do work but you also learn a lot mm -hmm. um the study load is manageable or doable um it clearly depends on how good is your time management and how willing are you to put efforts into your study and um, the grading system is quite strict I would say like in India you easily get nines or tens but here it's um, like seven is uh, considered a good grade and uh, scores above eight are usually rare and um, yeah uh, the teaching experience has also been very good professors are quite approachable they are also from very different countries like Brazil, Spain, uh, Turkey so you know there is an international environment and i think they also explain the material very well the material is up to date so yeah okay and regarding the ects like uh, european credits that you need to do in a year is there any strict requirement or yes uh, okay so for ects you have to there are 15 ECTS in each quarter and there are four quarters so in total 60 ECTS and um, for first year you need to get like at least 45 ECTS out of 60 to go into the second year so that's mandatory and uh, in second and third year you need to get at least 30 ECTS out of 60 and um, yeah that's the requirement for the ECTS at uh, U20 and in total there are 180 ECTS for three years so yeah okay and regarding group work how approachable are the professors and how did you find the course curriculum like compared to uh, i mean i came to netherlands for masters so obviously i noticed a sharp difference between the bachelors and the masters the way we are taught but in your case uh, like, did you notice any significant difference in the way the course is structured, like the practical theory or something else? And how is the group work? And yeah, so you can highlight these things. Yeah. OK, for um, group work, I would say most of the assignments are done in pairs. So you work with a pair, um, you work with a friend of yours or someone, you know, um, the projects are usually big, like at the end of each quarter, there is a project. So you usually work with at least four people or more. And uh, the professors are great. They are very approachable. You can just send them an email or knock on their door and they will just let you in. The professors are very cool. Um, the uh, the association, there is a study association called Interactive um, who organizes like a lot of events for the university. You can get to know the senior students, your TAs, and they organize a lot of activities like um, you know, land gaming, ice skating, um, parties, Tuesday drinks. There are a lot of activities for socializing, um, for al like for chess, like algorithm contests. You know, they organize a lot of things. And uh, if you are a member of that and if you are regular and participate actively in the activities, then you will have a good student life here. And um, for uh, the difference in curriculum, I would say yes, uh, there was of course a sharp difference, which I noticed was that um, the lectures were less, uh, the lectures were not very often, and the lectures were 
in depth, but they didn't give you like everything. Sometimes you have to search things on your own and some and do your own study. And a lot of work here is practical. So they use they give you the theory, but they all give you a lot of material to use that theory into the practical. So I would say the focus here on practical assignments and group work are huge. Yes. So if you come here, you will see a lot of um, you will work a lot in groups and a lot of practical assignments. Yeah. OK, OK, so moving on to the next question, what is the total cost of studying without any funding and what are the funding opportunities that you can have as part time jobs or TA or student assistants, etc. So the tuition fees for bachelors is 10,500 euros in my year. Right now it should be 10,650 euros. Um, I think for masters it's around 14,000 or 15,000. Uh, it's you can just check it up at the website. It's not. Uh, it should be around 15,000. And um, the living cost I would is a bit subjective, but uh, it should be around 600 to 700 on average. Um, if your housing is cheap, it can also go. And if you live cheap, it can go up, uh, go to like 500 or something. But that depends on your lifestyle. Um, but on average, yeah, um, 600 to 700. And uh, for part time jobs, there are opportunities, but uh, it depends on what type of skills you have. Like if you know how to drive a bike, if you have worked as a delivery boy or something. Or, or uh, jobs which don't require like a lot of language skills because it's it's a country where they don't speak English often, like especially uh, in Enskede, like the part time jobs usually require some sort of Dutch and maybe you want to work as a receptionist. So of course you need some Dutch for the old people, etc. cetera. Um, but for jobs which don't require languages, there are opportunities and there are also a lot of opportunities within the university to look through for the job. But of course you have to network a lot. And uh, the good thing is you can work as a TA in the second year or, and it pays around 10 to 12 euros per hour. And uh, you can work as, work about 16 hours a week as a non EU student. So yeah, those are the opportunities. Um, but yeah, there are some there are opportunities for part time jobs. But if I have to be honest, like uh, part time jobs can only pay like a significant amount or a part of amount for your living costs, but not completely. Yeah, and it's a bit hard to find, so you have to work if you want to find a part time job. Yeah. OK. So what is the proportion of Indian students, internationals and how is the overall atmosphere that you feel until now? OK, um, in my class uh, in bachelor's level, there are very few Indians. Um, I only saw like two, three Indians um, and there are some one or two Pakistanis or Bangladeshis like the Desi group and um, it's about 60% of students are international and 40% are Dutch, but most of the international students are from the Europe itself, like from different countries, Romania, Bulgaria, Spain, etc. So there are from a lot of European countries and um, the environment overall is very good. People are friendly, approachable. And um, yeah, I haven't faced any problems in the social environment. It's good. And um, the faculty also is very international. Like I said, there were people from Spain, Brazil, Dutch, of course. Um, so yeah, the environment is overall international and also accepting. So there is no problem there. Yeah. OK, so now we are moving to the most difficult question, which I sometimes hear from everyone when I ask this. So okay. maybe it is easy for you, but the question is, what is the one thing that you like the most and one thing that you dislike the most about the bachelor's program in computer science in 20 University Netherlands? OK, so the thing which I really like about University of 20 and the course here is that it's very practical. You work in groups and it's also very organized. So these three things really make it like a very good program overall. So if you don't have any experience in computer science, um, they teach you from like a very basic level and they take you to a very good level. But of course the pace is fast, but they teach you everything and they give you a lot of practical assignments, projects to make sure that you learn everything. 
um that's the re- that's the thing which i really like the most so far also it's organized like properly it's not haphazard like one thing is there one thing is there it's properly organized and um the one thing which i really dislike the most uh probably is going to change from this year but in my year this there was this thing um so each uh, module has about uh, 15 credits right and you need to pass everything to um get those 15 credits for example if you have four test one project and if if you fail anything and you also fail the reset for that test or project then you will fail the entire quarter then you don't get any credits so even though you passed the rest of everything so that was the thing which um, which i disliked and many students disliked that you know because you failed one thing you have to every other stuff suffers and you have to give like complete reset but uh, i think this is going to change from next year like they are going to divide it into five credits each so that everything suffers but in my year this was the case luckily i haven't been a victim of this but um yeah that was thing which you know kept many students in stress but uh yeah it's not it's not going to be there anymore from next year hopefully okay yeah so what are the living and housing options and your estimated monthly expenses okay so living and housing situation in enskere i think is the best out of all the netherlands uh, housing here is not very difficult to find if you know where to look and if you are on time and um, usually the housing outside the university is around um, 300 to 350 euros for a decent place usually it's shared housing if you want your own studio it's 500 euros or something um on the campus it can be cheap like if you find a group housing which uh, it's usually dutch houses some international houses but and it's also a lot of competition for those houses but if you find a nice place on campus it can even go down till 290 euros which is fairly cheap and um, but yeah also the prices for my housing like i live on campus i have my own kitchen i share bathroom with one another person so it's all about uh, it's about 400 euros and uh, my room is pretty nice is cozy um, so yeah uh, the pricing on average should be about 350 to 400 euros in enskede like that's a good price and uh, of course uh, there are facebook groups that you can join to find housing and um, there is housing outside campus on campus that's your own preference i think on campus is good on the first year uh, because um like of course you want to live near uh, the building where lectures take place and don't get late uh, but um, but good advantage of off campus is that you can explore the city more so it's really up to you if you want off campus or on campus it's a different set of priorities so yeah i'll say yeah okay and what is your estimated like apart from the rent uh, which you already mentioned uh, what are your like for example food and uh, transport or something like that any other estimated 2 3 expenses that you spend in a month okay um i spend about um about 200 to 300 euros a month on everything uh, like usually the hair cost haircut on university cost 16 euros mobile is 10 to 15 euros i ha- have a habit to eat um like eat outside or eat a lot so i spend a lot of money on food but on transportation i don't usually spend a lot of money usually everything is done by bike so if you cut down like if you don't go by my uh, living cost but if you are live, want to live cheap you can go about 100 to 50 euros 100 to 150 euros uh, for the food and everything you can at least uh, go up to that price if you if you live cheap so yeah um good av- good average would be about 150 to 200 euros yeah okay okay so how is the social life for an international or indian student okay that's a good question actually um so social life uh, you know completely depends on you in the first place if i have to say in short but in long i would say social life requires a lot of participation you are in a new country new people new everything so you know the first step is to be open minded to meet everyone everyone new and learn about their experiences in their life and stuff stuff like that but um 
The first step would be to approach people by yourself where you get opportunities. Like um, in the university, they organize a kick in, which is like 10 days of uh, 10 days and you select your own group. Like you select a group which uh, there are two people. There is uh, like two seniors um, who uh, kind of guide your group and there are about six to seven people in your group mix of Dutch people and internationals. And for 10 days, you do a lot of fun stuff like you party, you do a lot of fun stuff at the university. University organizes a lot of activities. So you do stuff with them, you you make great friends with them and they probably are going to be your friends throughout the university life and they are going to be the one whom you will do most of your projects with. So don't miss the kick in. That's like the golden chance to make friends here. But uh, besides the kick in, if you want social life, um, join a sports association or any association which you like according to your hobbies like music, uh, singing or dancing. But uh, if you really want to meet natives and Dutch people, I think Dutch people really love sports and um, I love CrossFit. So I joined the CrossFit Association and uh, it's full of Dutch people. And I have met a lot of people like uh, in the association. I was very regular and um, I, w I became like the secretary of the association. And now I meet a lot of people there. So that's one way to meet a lot of people is to be active in the university, join associations. Um, also, associations organize a lot of social events like um, parties and stuff and drinks. So you can go there, meet people. I think the first step would be if you want a good social life here, the first step, the right thing would be to be open minded be approachable and um, take the first step like for everything like people here won't approach you you have to approach people and make friendships and uh, also uh, the thing which was different from india is of course uh, people here take time to make friends so if you really want to make friends with someone try uh, you know doing a lot of activities and stuff with them um, they take time but they really become your good friend if you if you participate, if you just uh, hang in there and um, be active and take the step. Yeah. So, yeah. OK. And do you have something like Indian Student Associations? Yeah, 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 yeah. There is, there, is uh, there is a very big Indian Student Association here at uh, the University of Twente. Uh, they organize Diwali nights, Holi, and a lot of stuff. So you can find a lot of Indian students there who um, who you can join with and uh, have fun, make friends. Yeah, yeah. There is also that. Okay, so yeah. So as far as you know, like, what are the job opportunities that you can have after bachelor's in computer science in Twente University in Netherlands? Okay, uh, the job opportunities in Netherlands are usually good. Um, in Enschede, even there are a lot of startups and new companies and University of Twente is a very entrepreneurial university. So you can even open up your own startup if you're that ambitious and university will provide you a great platform to do so. And the opportunities are great for jobs. There are a lot of job career, uh, job fairs and um, you know symposium for companies to meet and discuss and talk about a lot of things, um, interactive organizers career fairs where you can go and meet companies and ask them their contacts, etc. But uh, the job opportunities here are good, but you need to look out for them yourself by doing a lot of networking, getting to know people, making a LinkedIn and, um, you know, approaching the employers, making your own CV. And of course, uh, you, need, you need skills, of course, like that's the most important thing. Um, you need skills in CS for having a good job uh, or applying for a job, which I think Twente will provide you. But if you do something on your own additional extra, which is out of the course, of course, it will help you. But the opportunities all in all are good. And it's all about how you make yourself, uh, how you make it out uh, by yourself. Yeah. OK, and most of the jobs in our computer science field is also in English, right? Uh, yes, most of the jobs here are in English, like computer science is in an English field, but I would say about 80 to 90 percent are in English, but there's some small startups in Dutch, you know, so um, if you want, if you learn Dutch, if you speak Dutch on a decent level, you can even open up like the full potential here in Netherlands, like uh, everything. So you, although English is sufficient for like 80 to 90 percent, but of course there is, if you want to like explore everything, 
like every opportunity then Dutch will obviously be beneficial. Okay, so before moving to the last question, how is the current situation caused by COVID-19 for the last two, three months affecting you and your studies or there is no effect like what happened? Um, so I am a computer science student and uh, most of my work is on computer. So the lectures are online. They teach you everything online. Uh, there are no physical lectures, um, but most of the assignments you have to do on your computer. So for me, the assignments and you know, uh, related to that, the practical assignments, nothing there has changed because of course I work on a computer, so I just need to sit in a place and just keep typing. But um, the life overall has become much more calmer, quieter. Like I had, I used to go to CrossFit, sports associations, I was active, but now I'm just sitting at home like everyone else. And it's, it's quiet, it's uh, nice, it's peaceful. I go out for uh, jogging, running. But uh, it's a lot more common, I would say, yes. Um, but overall, academically, I don't think much has changed. Most of the lectures are online, so yeah. Okay. So any final advice or tips that you want to give to the incoming aspirants who want to come to Netherlands in the future? Okay. The most important would be to learn cooking, of course, um, because if you don't know how to cook, you you won't you will get depressed if you don't know how to cook because food is very important, and yeah. uh, you can't survive on Dutch food for long. Like it's good, like they have some good food, but you also need to learn something of your own or maybe something like pasta or something like tacos, shawarma, making all of that. If you know that, then you will have uh, then you don't need to worry about food. Then once you you learn that, you will just make it automatically and don't have to worry in mornings or dinner, what will I make, you know, uh, stuff like that. And um, of course, bring uh, bring Indian utensils like karai, pressure cooker, because you don't find that here or it's very rare to find that. And uh, one good thing is that most masalas like haldi, turmeric, uh, haldi, or oh, sorry, it's the same thing, uh, haldi, garam masala, coriander powder, chili powder, Jira powder are all available here at the ANA market, which is the Turkish shop. They have a lot of things. They so you don't need to really worry about uh, the masalas or everything. You can you don't need to bring them from India unless they're very exotic, like which you only find at your place. But all, all in all, you can find most of the Indian um, Indian food ingredients here at the, at the Turkish shop. It's it's called ANA, and uh, when you come here. Uh, please, just make sure you buy a bike. That's the most important thing. Uh, get a good health insurance, probably the Aon health insurance, and uh, an OV chip card for traveling. Uh, it saves quite a lot of like you don't need to buy tickets. You just swipe the card. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like Delhi Metro. I don't know. You just swipe the card and you go out. Um, and uh, most importantly, uh, do read the rules of biking here like like for example don't use your phone while you bike or um yeah, yeah uh, no, just sorry to interrupt uh, yeah. i i made a video on that because i was fined recently when i was holding my phone on my left hand and i was fined 104 euros so mm. it will be released soon so you will know what he's talking about it's a serious uh, thing that uh, i was just using gps on a windy rainy day in delft when I visited one of my friend and I was on my bike because bike was in motion when I was holding the GPS, even if it was for one or two seconds, it was breaking the rules and you are fine immediately by the police who was crossing me 95 euros and including the service tax, everything it's 104 euros just for seeing the GPS. So it's a very serious thing. You'll see yeah. that in the video. I've made a video. I have not edited it. I'll release it soon. Yeah, so that's the thing. Just read the bike biking laws. That's the most important thing. And yeah, I think that's it. And uh, I think there was one last tip. Uh, they download apps for managing money, time. Just learn how to manage time and money because these things flow very. Uh, uh, these things flow out of your hand very quickly if you don't know how to do that. And um, yeah, just keep an open mind, interact with everyone. And uh, if you get time, please do learn Dutch if you want, especially if you want to stay here long term. I think it will really help you to integrate into the culture, the people if if you want to stay here long term, like for a lot of time. So yeah, that's it uh, from my side, all the tips. 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for giving your time on a Sunday to help each, help everyone out. Yeah. And uh, if you like this video, then don't forget to smash the like button, share this video among everyone so that everyone gets the information. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. And thank you, Pranav. So I think we, I, I don't know, but it will be like the eighth or tenth video with you. And we'll have many more after you finish bachelor's. Yeah. Maybe I don't know if I'm here in Netherlands. So yeah, so I hope you like this video and we'll see you in upcoming vlogs from Netherlands. Till then, yeah. peace and bye. All right.